Welcome to the newest episode in an ongoing Legendarium series about the plagues that have struck humanity. In this episode, the Antonine Plague of 165 AD, we will talk about how the Roman legions unknowingly brought smallpox to the empire they were supposed to be protecting. And this plague would profoundly change the Roman Empire. In the year 165 AD, the empire stood at the height of its power. Co-emperors and adopted brothers Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Verus led the legions in a victorious war against Parthia, an Asian power on Rome's southeastern border. Yet they brought home more than treasures plundered from Parthian temples. Most likely the Romans brought smallpox, a disease carried west to Parthia by the Silk Road which connected China to the Roman Empire. As Roman soldiers left Southwest Asia and took up positions in garrisons on the Rhine River, they unknowingly spread the disease across the empire they were sworn to protect. Galen, a Greek physician who served emperors Lucius Varus and Marcus Aurelius, described the plague's symptoms and course in gruesome detail. He described victims suffering from pustules on the skin, which is what leads many to believe this was smallpox. Galen further reported that patients suffered from fever, vomiting, thirst, and coughing fits. Finally, he noted that patients suffered from black diarrhea, likely a sign of gastrointestinal bleeding. The infected person suffered for two weeks and then either died or they recovered. Those who did regain their health would have immunity to smallpox outbreaks in the future, but many did not survive. The soldiers of Rome's legions suffered in particular. They lived in tightly packed barracks and did not consider hygiene to be a priority. Not surprisingly, the plague spread fast. Since the army did much trade with cities and towns, the disease spread fast there as well. Across the Roman Empire, great merchants who commanded whole fleets and shopkeepers working the main street found themselves out of business because nobody wanted to go out and trade. Thousands of middle-class Romans were reduced to abject poverty. At the height of the outbreak in Rome, 2,000 people died each day, which brought city life to a standstill. For the next 23 years, the epidemic raged through the empire, its most famous victim being Emperor Lucius Varus, who died in 169 AD. His death is almost certainly the reason why he is described in the legend as the emperor who invited the gods' anger. After 169, Lucius Varus's co-emperor Marcus Aurelius took sole command. Yet he ruled over a much reduced empire. Somewhere between 7 and 10% of the empire's population of 60 to 70 million people had died. That meant as many as 7 million plague victims. With so many dead, the Germanic tribes across the Rhine crossed the river for the first time in 200 years to loot and pillage the Roman Empire. Marcus Aurelius would devote much of his reign to pushing back this invasion. Yet with so many of his soldiers dead, he was forced to lower standards for Roman recruits. He began conscripting peasant laborers from their farms and even hired Germanic mercenaries. Though he would not know it, Marcus Aurelius's decisions would have a corrosive effect on the Roman Empire in generations to come by weakening its military. The psychology of the Roman polity changed as well. After 200 years of peace and prosperity, Romans now faced fear as they never had before. Emperors responded by pouring money into sacred sites and temple construction to appease the angry gods. Yet another religion offered different answers. Christianity had previously been a very small sect, largely confined to Rome's eastern provinces. 
Yet Christian priests made a special effort to visit and minister to plague victims despite the risk to their own health and lives. And this deep care for the poor helped to spread Christianity like never before. By the beginning of the third century, there would be several hundred thousand Christians within the Roman Empire, as people were moved by the deep humanity of Christian priests compared to their pagan counterparts who often scorned the sick and dying as accursed by the gods. That wraps things up for this installment of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.